Hey, welcome back to Factory Garage. In today's episode, we're gonna give a little update on uh, Project Forgotten Pony. This is the 94 Mustang GT that I picked up that had been sitting in a field for 15 plus years and uh, brought it back to the shop and fixed a bunch of issues in the last few videos I did on the car. And I've fixed a few other things since then, but now I'm digging into some other stuff that I wasn't expecting, but I'm gonna get into that in this video. So. Uh, Let's get on with the update. So as you can see, I've thrown some new shoes on the car. I uh, had these Chrome FR500 sitting around. So I went ahead and threw them on here. I'm not sure if these are the wheels that are gonna stay on the car, <clears throat> but it does look really nice with them. The other thing I've done is all the interior in this car was really, really bad condition. Um, it had a bunch of wiring issues behind the dash. Uh, one of the reasons it wouldn't run was it had a a chip in it an aftermarket chip and it must have just fried or gone out in the time that it had been sitting so when i got the car it would not run would not fire nothing so i went and pulled that chip out i got it to run it started running real rough and i assumed there was some <clears throat> uh, wiring issues that probably had gotten with mice or whatever so i went ahead and Dug through the whole car's systems and started fixing those. Um, one thing it did have is the mice had chewed through all the wiring for the headlights and the fog lights. And I think there was an EGR tube, or sorry, the EGR wiring, it had chewed through that. But I've went ahead and fixed all that. And then today, it still is running a little rough, so I went ahead and... Uh, um, pulled the injectors, pulled all that stuff, did a compression check, and that's when I found the latest issue that uh, isn't good, but it was kind of expected. So these are my compression numbers, and as you can see, um, one was 115, two, 130, three, 127, 125, 105, 115, and bam, zero. So number seven in this engine is dead. Uh, I'm not sure why, it could be burn valve, could be a lot of different things, but it has zero compression. So now I'm in the process of jerking this engine out and I had bought a replacement engine a while back thinking that the engine might be bad in this car. So a buddy of mine down in the Springs, he had another engine that he pulled out of, I believe a 94 GT convertible and that is sitting right here and uh looks like this one's gonna actually have to go into this car so it's kind of unfortunate i was hoping to have it just be simple wiring issues but ends up i have a dead cylinder so i'm gonna go ahead and get this engine jerked out and hopefully get the new engine in by tomorrow evening I'm um, not even sure what time it is right now. It's about 1.20 on a Friday. And I just started pulling apart. Got the radiator, <clears throat> the radiator shroud and the fan and the intake and some basic parts off. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this engine jerked out. And hopefully by the end of this weekend, this thing will be running with the new engine. So go ahead and stay tuned. I'll do a little time lapse of pulling the engine out and uh, kind of talk about what I'm doing in the process. I know some of you guys have probably pulled lots of these engines out. Some of you may not have pulled any out. So maybe this video will do you guys some good. So stay tuned. All right, just got the uh, exhaust and the transmission out. I like personally pulling the tra transmission out, not with the engine on these, because it's just a lot easier. I mean, I've been working on it less than an hour, pulled all the exhaust, transmission, drive shaft, everything out, and uh, got it sitting right over here. So it's a lot less time, a lot less hassle. You don't have to pull the radiator out this way. Um, you do have to drain the radiator, but you don't have to pull it. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the car down and we will start on the top side. Uh, I still, well, I guess you can't drop down yet. I still had uh, motor mounts to do. So I will go ahead and drop these two bolts and then we'll Start disconnecting everything up top. 
Okay, well this hasn't been my fastest removal of an engine, but we're creeping right on two hours on getting the engine and transmission out. So this is the last part. Everything should be disconnected, should pop right out. All right, so there you have it. That'll take care of this episode of Fat Kid Garage. Uh, tune in tomorrow. We'll go ahead and get the new engine all set up and ready to go back in. It shouldn't take much since it did come out of a 94 Mustang II. Um, I believe the only thing I'm gonna have to put into it is a pilot bushing for the manual transmission. So uh, stay tuned for uh, the next episode of Fat Kid Garage when we're putting the new engine back in this thing. I'm out. <laughs>